the world's best short stories. transcribed tale reflects the efforts of an actor, Robert Middlemass, and of an author, Harold Porter. Harold Porter's pen name is Howarthy Hall, and he has written such stories as Henry of Navarre, Ohio, The Man Nobody Knew, and What He Least Expected. Here now is The Valiant. Outside, a bleak wind drives cold rain against the slimy gray rock of the state prison at Weathersfield, Connecticut. It is a miserable, heartless night. Inside, the warden's office, large, cold, with bare floors and more of those same drab gray walls. At the back of the room, a pool of light from a desk lamp tries to fight back the ominous blackness of the rest of the room. Barely visible on a wall, the pendulum of a clock swings back and forth, back and forth. And in a swivel chair behind the desk sits Warden Holt. The smoke of a thin cigar curls about his head, caresses the desk lamp, and drifts up into the darkness. Behind Holt stands Father Daly, a slender, white-haired priest. A flash of lightning pierces the night and bleaches the fat face of Warden Holt. It would have to rain tonight. Well, we haven't long to wait. Thank God for that. He still won't give you any hint of who he is, eh? Oh, he intends to die as a man of mystery. About all we know about him is that he is a Pacific War veteran. He loosened up to another prisoner. But he's shielding somebody. He's not kidding me. Dyke isn't his real name. Padre, this boy's guilty. Yes, he killed a man. And he pleaded guilty. He deserves what he's going to get. Are you uh, going to talk to him again, Warden? Yes. Yes, I've got to make one more try. Uh, you want me to come along? Yeah, I think... No. No, wait a minute. I've got an idea. Instead of our going to see him, I'll have him brought here. Let him sit with you and me until it's time. Maybe he'll loosen up. Besides, if we take him through the hall, maybe we can keep the rest quiet. Dan, bring in Dyke. What did you say, sir? Bring in Dyke. Uh, yes, sir. And Dan, when everything is ready, I want you to come into the office. I don't want you to say anything. All you have to do is stand here. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Bring in Dyke. What about the witnesses and the reporters? Everything's taken care of with those people. They're eating now. Yes? What is it? Is it about Dyke? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, put him on. Yes, this is Holt. Hello. Hello, Governor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, in about a half hour. Everything's ready. A girl. How long until she'll arrive? No, sir, she's not here yet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, the minute it's over. Yes. Yeah. All right, sir. Good. Yeah. Goodbye. Fuller has sent a girl over to see Dyke. 
She should be here by now. I'm supposed to hold things up until she gets here. She thinks Dyke's her long-lost brother. Yes? We're ready for Dyke, sir? Okay, Dan. Bring him in. Sit down, Dyke. Dyke, you've been under my supervision for about four months now, haven't you? You've acted like a gentleman. I've... I've made every bit... made you every bit as comfortable as the law would permit. I've even brought you in here to stay from now on. Boy, you don't seem to understand. I'm, I'm doing something out of the ordinary for you. My son, the warden is only trying to be kind. Dyke, before it's too late, I wish you'd think over what Father Daly and I have said to you so many times. Son, man to man, who are you? Who are you? Your mind is made up, eh? Do you see this pile of letters? Every one of these letters is about the same thing. About 4,000 of them. Why, we've had letters from every state in the Union and every province in Canada, even. Do you know what they're all about? They're about you. Who are you? Who are you, son? Are, they, are you the missing son of, of the long-lost brother, the sweetheart who might be dead? I want you to tell them who you are. We know you're shielding somebody. Come on, now, who is it? A sister, your fiancé, your... What is it? Miss Paris. Uh-huh. Have a search. I'll call you. Dyke, there's a girl here to see you. She thinks she's your sister, and she's come a thousand miles to find out. She's got special permission from the governor. I'm going to bring her in now, son. Okay, Dan. Send her in. Okay, Dan. Thanks. Come in, please. Won't you sit down? Thank you. You, uh... You've had an interview with the governor, I understand. And you want to see Dyke. I hope I'm not too late. No, you're not too late. But perhaps I'd better ask you a few questions. Where do you live? Pennington, Ohio. It's not far from Columbus, you know. Pennington. I know that part of Ohio. It's beautiful there at this time of year. You live with your parents? With my mother. Dad died when I was a baby. Why didn't your mother come? She's sick. Oh, I'm sorry. Any brothers or sisters? Only this Scott. Scott Paris. He and I were the only children. He's older than you? Why did he leave home? We don't know. How long was that? Twelve years. And you're about, uh, twenty, eh? Hmm, twenty-one. Hmm, yes. Well, well, what made you think this man might be your brother? Well, Mother saw an article in our local paper. It was about this prisoner. It didn't say much. We don't know much about him. Oh, I know, but one passage, and it sounded so like Scott. Well, we thought it might be worth... Well, well, worth the trip. A, a, a passage? I, I, I don't understand. But, uh, well, what makes you think you can recognize Dyke as your brother? Perhaps you know he doesn't want to be recognized. What? Oh, oh, I thought of that. I'm just going to ask him questions. I'll watch his face. I'm sure I can tell. You see, he used to play games with me. And tell me stories. Shakespeare stories. Shakespeare? Yes. He'd read the stories and then he'd tell them to me in his own words. It was wonderful. Miss, I have someone here I'd like you to meet. I'd like you to meet Dyke. Dyke, this is Miss Paris. I'll leave you two alone now for a little while. Come on, Father.
You see, we haven't heard from my brother, Scott, for so long, and you look a little like him, and, well, it's been so long, and we thought that, well... I never had a sister. Honestly? Honestly. Didn't you ever live in Ohio? Never. And I've been everything a man could be, except a success. Well, you went to high school. Where? Where no, did you... No, I never got that far. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face. Else would a maiden blush be paint my cheek. For that which I... You're not Scott, are you? I had to find out. I'm sorry. Wait. Wait. Scott Paris. Perhaps I can help you, miss. Tell you, perhaps, about your brother. About your brother. It was five years ago on Iwo Jima. I saw it happen. Just after our platoon hit the beach, the lieutenant was hit. He was a young kid, just about my size. When we got to him, about all that was left was an identification tag. It belonged to a Scott Paris. Scott? Scott Paris? Maybe, well, maybe it was another Scott. The War Department, you know, makes mistakes. Why don't you go there? My brother killed fighting. And you were there and saw it? You should be proud, my dear. But now, it's time. You'd better go. Oh, if I could only tell you what this means. The terrible burden of not knowing. He's dead. At last we know. He's dead. Is there anything I can do for you? Nothing. What are you thinking of? Oh, I was just thinking what I used to say to my brother. Well, good night. If I only could have said it just once more, once more to him. Well, goodbye. I told it to you once. I guess it seems silly to you. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Sleep, dwell upon thine eyes, peace in thy breast. Would I were sleep and peace so sweet to rest. Of all the wonders that I yet have heard, it seemed heard, it seemed heard, it seemed heard, it seemed to me most strange that men should fear, seeing that death, a necessary end, will come when it will come. Die. My son, I will lift up thine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh... Cowards die many times land, before their deaths. Which made the heaven... Will die many the times land, before their deaths. Which made the heaven... The valiant never the taste of death, but once... This is Jack Cronell, together with Gene C. Housen, Bill Johnson, Ray Gulton, Bill Johnson, Ray Galbin, Gene Dorsey, Chuck Fink, Ralph Krubeck, and Jim Gorman, Ralph Krubeck, and Jim Gorman and Dick Mesnard as technical directors, 
with the technical directors, we've brought you The Valiant. Valiant. This is the University of Illinois Radio Service.